Welcome to another lecture. This time I'm going to talk to you today about the idea of uh, etymology. Etymology just, I mean, I always like to give a lecture on this, um, not so much because it's really that pertinent. I just, oftentimes when I, when I do a philosophy course, including this one, I sometimes will say, well, the etymology of that word is. And part of what I'm saying is, is where does this word come from in the Greek? You know, most of you remember from your um, biology and zoology and other things that things like bio means life and ology means study of. So anytime you see the word ology, you know, study of, and then bio is life, so study of life. Or zoology is study of animals. Zoo, you know, you can think of the animals at the zoo. Um, and so <clears throat> we can go ahead and move along through that and we can think of, you know, biology, zoology, you know, and so on and so forth. And so what essentially what you're doing there is you're looking at the root of the words, where did the word come from? And by doing that, you begin to get some idea of what the original word meant and maybe a little bit fuller understanding that, you know, sometimes these things, while they come from a one root, they oftentimes change. Now, part of the idea here is, is that in English, we have an alphabet, and our alphabet makes different sounds. And the English language, as its very beginnings, was predominantly a, ling a language that was based on sounds. That, you know, happy sounds might be, you know, like, ah, and bad sounds might be, oh. And, you know, and that eventually, you know, that, you know, perhaps primitive man, uh, you know, that it would they would have made different noises depending upon happiness and sadness and eventually those morphed into words and those words began to be put together into multi-syllable words and uh, they they began to become uh, something that perhaps we are more <clears throat> recognizing of you know as words today but we can go back and we can find those now one thing I always like to look at is um, actually recently here at Lincoln Land, uh, if you're ever on campus, um, there was recently in the, uh, the Abraham Lincoln Commons, there was a, a presentation of uh, Chinese characters, the history of Chinese uh, uh, calligraphy or, you know, the words basically, you know, those stylized symbols you see that uh, say different things. And one of the things that, um, that, you know, when you see these words, you see these things and they oftentimes, um, you know, you see these things and they'll, you know, maybe look like this. And that's just sort of me giving some sort of primitive uh, drawing. But they'll look like something like that. And those are actually what we call pictographs. And this is what that presentation was doing was sort of the history of how that was done. And I had uh, gone to a conference at which the guy who put that presentation together was... Uh, one of the one of the <clears throat> presenters <clears throat> and at the end of the conference after he gave a lecture on it, he gave each of us a um, pictograph and I have mine I have no idea where it was I was gonna bring I was gonna break it out and hold it up in the video but I uh, can't find it so I don't you know, I, I I don't know where it is um, I, I'm pretty sure I, I think I took it to my office and it's sitting in a drawer somewhere and um, but the basic idea is that within each of those pictographs that whereas in English we have these this vocabulary that allows for our words to be basically sounds and that's how our language developed in Chinese they have they, the, the pictographs or the words and the sound is completely different you can't sound out you can't do phonetical uh, understanding of a word in Chinese you have to simply look at the picture and the picture though in its primitive form was very much like hieroglyphics. You know, if you wanted to say sheep, you would draw a picture of a sheep. If you wanted to say, you know, a sky, you'd draw a picture of the sky, etc. And then these 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 words became stylized, and they became more like little drawings, and they eventually have sort of morphed into the current Chinese. But the word justice I liked because it's actually a picture. It's actually two Chinese words that are put together, two pictures put together. And the first one is the basically the top of it looks something to the effect of um, uh, something to the effect of, you know, it does actually look kind of, it was actually kind of drawing, it looks something like that, which is actually supposed to be a picture, essentially, that the old picture would have been something like this, yeah, but it would have been a sheep, and it would have looked something like that, so that's just sort of, you know, but it's been turned, um, you know, if you look at it kind of with the idea that, you know, this is a sheep, sort of like this, and then you turn it over, and it becomes something like that. So what happens is, is that, 
the um, <clears throat> the early Chinese character of sheep is part of it, and the other bottom half is actually a word for um, is actually a word for uh, is a word for self or me. And the idea there, and actually this word for self or me, is actually a picture of like a hunter and a sheep, is actually the way the ancient Chinese word for self would look like. So it actually has that sheep character again within it. And the reason why is for the Chinese word for justice, it is actually a combination of the words self and sacrifice, basically. Self and sheep. Sheep are sacrificed. They're animals that we would, you know, use and sacrifice or, you know, maybe give to the gods. And so you would have an image of a self-sacrifice. And so for the Chinese, the idea of justice is an idea that in order to have justice, you must sacrifice yourself. You must think beyond yourself. Now, within the Western idea of justice, the justice is usually symbolized. If we were to have an image, we usually have a picture of... Well, I'll show you. I mean, I, I can sort of draw a picture. Usually we have a lady with a blindfold over her face, and she's got her hand up, and she's holding a scale, right? You would see this at a courthouse. That's my picture. Thank you. Don't make fun of it. Um, and so the, uh, the picture there would be a picture of a lady, you know, Lady Justice. And for us, in the Western society, the idea of justice is an idea of balance between what is, you know, the balance between two people that, you know, blindly trying to meet out what is equal. And so, to a certain degree, I mean, that that root and where that word comes from creates a very different idea of how the Chinese view justice and how the Americans or how the Westerners view justice. And so what happens is, <clears throat> is we can take these two images, these images of, you know, justice, but by doing that, we're looking essentially at the etymology of those words. That, you know, for that, for the Chinese, we're looking at the etymology of it through pictographs. And in English, we're, we're sort of um, perhaps not so much, we're just looking more at the definition. But by looking at the root, by looking at the history, by looking at some of the, the context of how we understand the word, what all it means, how we view it, how we see it, we get a better understanding of how, like, for example, justice would differ between a Western and an Eastern civilization. And so that's essentially what we're talking about with etymology, but on the very basic level for this, we're going to be looking at when did the word come about, what were the Greek words, what do the Greek words mean, and how does that relate to the concept we have of the word philosophy today.